We're on. We're on live. Hey, how you doing? Hey, everybody. How's it going? Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. How you doing today? Welcome to my channel. Uh, welcome to uh, Tuesday, February, February 13th. <laughs> welcome to February 13th. It's almost halfway through the month. Oh, my gosh. It's incredible. The older we this get, was me eight years ago, broke the older we out. get, the faster time flies. And I keep forgetting to put my phone on mute when I go on air. How you guys doing? Welcome to my channel. Welcome to the live chat today uh, here in Creston, BC, Canada, where I'm sitting. Uh, we had a glorious sunny day about, up to about half an hour ago. And uh, this side of my face would have been really shiny. Uh, but now the clouds are kind of coming in. They're light, but uh, they've taken away that brightness. And we're about 30 degrees today. We're not getting any breaks uh, from winter. It's, uh, it's cool. But uh, we'll take it. Uh, we don't have a blizzard or anything like that. And I've got friends of mine uh, in Alberta. And then uh, across, you folks who are watching me, some of you across the country, you're just in miserable weather. It's unbelievable. Uh, I can't really complain. Um, welcome again to the channel today. Uh, I've got a few topics I want to kind of bring up with you. And then, uh, we'll, of course, we'll open the floor open to uh, take any questions you have on cruising, traveling, you name it. Uh, a couple of updates on my channel as well. I'll talk about that. Uh, saying, I've already said hi to a few folks on the text here before I even went on the air as I was setting up the channel. Uh, Richard Koromaski is here from uh, Philly saying it's 38 in Philly already. And uh, I got a friend of ours, uh, Scott. Scott Durwood's here from uh, Haver, Montana, 32 degrees. Winds are blowing. Uh, yep, it's like our temperature, but you've got wind. We don't. Uh, welcome, you guys. Uh, you're the first two to sign in today before I even went on the air. <laughs> Uh, fantastic. Uh, those of you who are just watching for the first time, uh, if you like, uh, you can you know say hi to me here or by texting in on your phone or your computer. Uh, tell me where you're watching me from. Where, where in the world are you? I have viewers in the UK, Australia, South Africa, um, all over the US, all over Canada. And uh, tell me what's your town and what's your high temperature going to be today? And we'll say hello. I know that right now there's an ad probably running right now. And uh, as soon as the ad's over, you guys will be uh, flooding in and we'll go from there. Anyway, um, on my channel, uh, the story now is um, got off the air yesterday afternoon. We were at 734 subscribers. Uh, we'd had a good uh, good weekend. And uh, overnight, some more subscribers have come on board. Uh, 747 I'm showing right now, last I looked. So we're zooming in here on 750. Uh, it's like every couple of days, another 50, another 50. Uh, I got a week to go uh, for uh, for uh, the big one, uh, which is um, the cutoff date for uh, YouTube with respect to uh, the monetization deal. And uh, I've got to reach a thousand subscribers uh, by next uh, week, the 20th of Feb. I think it's the end of the day, February 20th, I, I think. Uh, and I'm just hoping for a late push to get us there, but uh, the subs are just coming and coming all the time. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it'll probably happen a few days after, and uh, we'll just deal with the issues as they go. But at the moment, uh, we're at 747 subscribers, over 85,000 views now on the channel. Um, 28 days, the last 28 days, four weeks, half of all my views have come in in the last four weeks. Just, you know, so the last month that's really come on. As a matter of fact, um, Two months ago today, December 13th, I hit 100 subscribers. Uh, and that was a feat, because as those of you who are around, <laughs> there aren't, weren't many of us. <laughs> I think about that now, I, I kind of chuckle. But at that time, that was a big deal to get into three digits, because at 100 subscribers, the analytics, um, uh, you got kind of, your profile was raised within the YouTube family, because if you have 100 subscribers, you're you kind of reach some sort of a milestone and the analytics get a little better. And it, it did. My channel picked up a little bit of action right away. Uh, but in 60 days, uh, I've added 647 more. <laughs> so the, the, from, from August when I started to December 13, that was 100 subscribers. And now in the last two months, 647. And we're accelerating even now. So I know that two months from now, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we're at 2,500 subscribers. I just the way this channel is is analytically progressing. It's wonderful. 
I'm so appreciative of you folks who are joining me. Uh, those of you who are subscribing, I really appreciate it. If you give me a thumbs up today on this video, that would be super. Uh, we almost, I don't know if we set a record yesterday, but somebody commented, give Bruce a thumbs up today. And I inadvertently read it a lot. I didn't realize it, but, <laughs> and I looked last night, oh my goodness, I'm zooming in on 50 likes on yesterday's video. All you guys jumped on board. That actually helps me because the, uh, the uh, computers at, uh, at uh, YouTube, they sense momentum and uh, cus um, viewer engagement is what they're calling it. And if you're giving me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, but hopefully a thumbs up, uh, the computers pick it up and they promote the video even more because they sense that, oh, the people like this uh, you know, video or live stream, whatever we're doing here. Um, and we should push it more to our, you know, the rest of our channel. And of course, that's what I live for. If, uh, if somehow I can be exposed to the, uh, what, 1 billion people a day that watch a YouTube video, if a small sliver of those uh, find out about us, a bunch of them might be cruisers. Next thing you know, we've got more joiners and uh, I'll have an increase in subscribers even faster. If you'd like to subscribe, if you haven't already, there's a button here. There's probably a button there. One has a bell icon beside it. Hit that, and you'll be notified every time I do a new video. Okay, enough of the commercials. <laughs> Let's say hi to a few folks here because they are saying hello to me now. Uh, Heather Young is here. Hi, Bruce, from Kentucky, around 35 degrees. Hi, Heather. How are you? Uh, Sylvan Forrest. Hi, Bruce. 80 degrees of Fahrenheit with a cigar and a rum and coke in Delray Beach, Florida. Uh, no live picture showing. Now, I'm showing a, a picture on my cell phone here. I'm showing a picture on my computer feed. Uh, you may have to uh, disengage and come back in, uh, Sylvan, and see if that works for you. Uh, but it looks like everything here is okay. Uh, and I'm showing uh, at least 12 viewers on right now. Uh, so I, I know we've got a bit of a feed here. So hopefully it's, um, you know, I hate to say it, but it might be you, <laughs> not me. I don't know. Uh, Teresa McFarland's here. Hi, Bruce. Minus five today in Waterloo. Welcome back, Teresa. Uh, Richard's saying, yep, it's live. He's got me. Uh, he's in Philly. So. Um, it's definitely Sylvan, uh, and then you've got an issue there, Sylvan, with your uh, with your photo, with your computer. So you may want to, uh, uh, you know, log out, log in. Oh, yeah, he's back. Uh, he's got the picture. Thanks, fantastic, uh, uh, Sylvan. Thanks, fantastic. I'm glad to have you. Um, today, I'm going to. Uh, I want to bring up a couple of things. Uh, the first bit I want to mention about uh, was an announcement. Actually, was made yesterday. Um, I didn't mention it yesterday because we were so busy with our uh, with our uh, chat uh, that we had going here. Um, but uh, news today or yesterday came out from Carnival. Uh, Carnival is um, Carnival's expanding their California cruise operations. Um, they have three ships right now uh, working out of Long Beach, uh, California, and they're using the the old uh, pavilion building that used to house the Spruce Goose. If you folks remember the movie The Aviator and Howard Hughes. Uh, the, the old Spruce Goose used to be inside this round dome building right by the Queen Mary Hotel, the old cruise ship, the old ocean liner, I guess I should really say. And for a number of years, probably 15, 20 years, uh, the Spruce Goose and the Queen Mary were sort of a kind of a, a package deal. You could take a tour uh, of the Queen Mary. You could get a ticket to go into the pavilion and, and see the Spruce Goose yourself. But in 1992, uh, that marriage ended and the spruce goose uh ended up moving to portland and um it was towed up believe it or not uh by by a barge and it was towed up to portland and it was like partially deassembled de and reassembled there and it's now uh, sitting there permanently uh, in the meantime the pavilion um a few things were done with it over the years but in the last little while carnival has stepped up and has decided they're going to make that their uh hub uh, their terminal for passengers for cruises off the West Coast for, for Carnival cruise ships that are going to either Hawaii or down to uh, Mexico and Sonata and even in, even up the coast a little ways. And uh, they announced yesterday that uh, they had just uh, committed to leasing the entire pavilion. They, they now run the whole pavilion. They've expanded their terminal inside there, spent I think a million and a half uh, money, dollars of their money to, to do that to enhance the passenger experience. Apparently, up until now, if you were going to take a cruise, um, you had to sort of line up outside the pavilion and then get in. And uh, now they've got so much space in there, you can just walk right into the pavilion. They got a big area where you can you know, leave your bags and then work your way over to the uh, check-in counters, 35 of them or something like that. And they have their first class area, like their you know, 
preferred class and then the rest of us <laughs> over here uh and then you walk it out go through a skywalk and um and into the ship um the other news they brought out was a new ship is coming uh called the panorama and uh, that one will land on the uh 2019 so that's next year I think it'll be next year late uh and it's designed and destined for uh long beach they're going to launch it in europe when it's completed it'll in straight head straight to Long Beach, and it will be used for the um, Mexican Riviera seven night cruises out of Long Beach. And this is a Vista class ship. Uh, this this ship, the Panorama, is going to join uh, the Vista and the Horizon, the Carnival Horizon. Um, uh, same design, thirty nine hundred sixty passengers, um, uh, twenty nineteen delivery, and um, uh, it'll also have the Havana Club uh, at the back. It'll have the uh, the sky cycle thing that they have on the horizon as well. Um, it'll have all the amenities and a quite large ship. It'll be the largest ship on the West Coast, uh, flying the West Coast of any of the cruise lines. Princess Cruises operates uh, from the Los Angeles uh, uh, World um, uh, Cruise Pavilion or, or terminal, which is really, if, as a crow flies, about a mile. <laughs> Long Beach and LA are the connected. I mean, you you wouldn't know one city from the other unless you could tell the difference between the design of the sidewalk or the design of the street lights, perhaps. Anyway, uh, the LA port is about a mile away as a crow flies, and that's a terminal. There's a terminal there that Princess uses. Carnival owns Princess, which uh, you know kind of makes me chuckle a little bit because the uh, the uh, the terminal the the terminal now in Long Beach. Um, they're using it apparently five days a week, and uh, they're not using Princess at that terminal. Yet they own they own the the same company. It's the same company. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, it just happens to work that way. Um, I guess uh, for for Carnival logistics and for Princess, the logistics are just the way they are. Uh, Princess uses the terminal there uh, in in Los Angeles. I know that Holland America does uh, Mexican Riviera cruises, uh, but Holland America likes to operate out of San Diego. And uh, they're right out of downtown San Diego. I mean, literally, you're getting on the ship and the skyscrapers are right in front of you, a couple blocks away from you. It's quite spectacular. And then just off to the, uh, if you're facing downtown, like if I'm facing you, you're downtown San Diego, just over here to my right. The naval, some of the naval ships, including the aircraft carriers are sitting right there. It's quite a neat thing to see in downtown San Diego. Anyway, that's what's happening with Carnival. They made a big splash about it yesterday. The uh, Splendor, I believe, which is being used now by Carnival for the um, Mexican Riviera cruises, they're going to take that ship into dry dock in, the, in 2019. So when, when this new one, the Panorama, arrives, Splendor goes into dry dock, will have a major rework, and then it'll be dispatched to Sydney, Australia. And it'll be the largest ship operating out of Sydney Harbor on a full-time basis, and it'll ply the waters between uh, Sydney and probably uh, New Zealand, and other areas down under. So that's that's the plan with Carnival. They're making a little bit of doing some shifts. Uh, Steve Bartley's here. My wife and I visited the Queen Mary and Spruce Goose on our honeymoon. Steve, that would have been pretty cool. My wife and I, we spent a night on the Queen Mary. Uh, we did the Spruce Goose thing and uh, uh, saw that and, and took the tour of the Queen Mary. We did an, an overnighter and uh, enjoyed it. I, I, I thought it was kind of neat. That was I asked her yesterday, I said, when was that? You, you remember what year it was? Because it was kind of a, a sort of testing her because I, I had read about how the Spruce Goose had left in 92. So I knew this had to be before 92. And uh, she perked up and said, I think it was 84 or 1986 <laughs> before. She refers to it as uh, BC, before child. Because <laughs> we've had we've had one together and that one is now 30. <laughs> so this is before child that we uh, spent the night on the Queen Mary uh and uh and uh, uh had a little bit of a break down there that was kind of cool uh i guess you know if you're going to take a cruise on the uh on the carnival ship uh or even the princess cruise line uh an idea uh you know if you're flying a ways in to los angeles is a fly in the day before and spend the night on the queen mary hotel and you'll get one night on a 1930s vintage uh ocean liner and then the next day walk to the pavilion and get on a carnival ship and Welcome to the 21st century uh, and enjoy modern day cruising. You know, that'd be kind of a neat thing to do. Or after the cruise, stop at the Queen Mary and have a night there as well on the way home, whatever. 
Uh, who else is here? Uh, uh, Francis Williams is here. Hi, all from Beaumont, Texas, 45 and rain here. Uh, yeah, rain in Texas. So we have rain uh, elsewhere. Uh, welcome. Welcome back. It's nice to have you. Um, got a nice crew here. Uh, other thing I wanted to mention today was uh, I wanted to talk to you today about uh, then and now. Uh, cruising then and cruising now. And I wrote down a few uh, pointers, a few things to remind me and, and uh, that I went over. And um, it depends on how far back you go, but things have changed even 10 years ago. Uh, uh, those of you or those of us who've cruised just cruise ships, you know, through the uh, through the last 20, 30 years, we've noticed a lot of changes in the last 20, 30 years. But if you've been on an ocean liner back in the 50s or 60s, uh, it's a whole world different now than it was back then. And some people like to say, "Oh, those are the good old days," and others will say, "No, these are the these are the good old days." It all depends on your perspective and and what uh, you know what it means to you and what the whole point of the cruise is. Back in the fifties and the forties and and before the Second World War, if you wanted to cross the Atlantic Ocean and you wanted to do it in an affordable fashion, whether you were coming from Europe to North America or the other way around, you you only cruise. You you there was no you didn't even think about a flight. Um, 1959, Boeing uh, brought out the 707 jetliner, and uh, that changed everything. That that bird, that four-engine jet, killed the cruise uh, transatlantic cruise business. Eventually, it, it didn't do it overnight, but within 10 years, um, uh, transatlantic cruising was almost non-existent, except for the QE2, which came out in '69. And uh, the QE2, as we know, survived until 19 uh, until 2008. Excuse me. Uh, I was retired in 2008. It's now sitting in Dubai. It's about to open up as a hotel. I just heard last week they're almost finished renovating that ship. But uh, in the uh, in the 50s, the 60s, if you've ever seen the uh, the movie uh, with Tom Hanks and uh, and uh, oh oh I'm I'm going to get in trouble now. This is the movie that they shot in Seattle, uh, Sleepless in Seattle. If you saw the movie Sleepless in Seattle, you saw a clip of a movie uh, with um, Cary Grant. And uh, the other actress who I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting. If any of you folks can help me, I'd appreciate it. It was the story of the couple that fell in love on the ocean liner crossing the Atlantic to New York. And a fair to remember, I believe it was called. Uh, and uh, uh, that, uh, that movie is kind of interesting in a way because it uh, showed what it was like in the 50s uh, on a transatlantic ocean liner. And... Uh, modern everything i mean it had modern everything uh, and yet uh we look at it today and we go oh my gosh uh uh the ship from an affair to remember uh we we would be uh i don't think we'd be able to handle it <laughs> we we modern we modernists i don't think we'd be able to take it um uh, without television without internet uh without a big screen tv on the pool deck uh without a big pool deck <laughs> there was one at the back I think we'd be uh, we we'd be shocked. Uh, maybe the first night too, we'd be enamored with it. But I think after the third or fourth day, we'd be going. I'm missing my, I'm missing my gadgets, man. I I need stuff. I need stimulation here. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, Meg Ryan, Teresa, thank you. All right, <laughs> uh, uh, just saying hi here to a few more folks. Betsy Gurleski's here from Hamilton. It's minus three. How you doing? You're in Hamilton. Nice to have you, Richard. Saying Bruce. Have you tried a freighter travel? I'd love to, but wife says no way. Yeah, it's it's a little more basic. Uh, you know, you haven't got all the niceties. I'm, I've never done freighter travel, though. Paula is here today uh, from, hey, Bruce, Paula from Big Bear, 42 and Sunny. My my number two from uh, Big Bear. I've got two of you up there. Uh, Teresa saying Meg Ryan and Scott Batchley saying hi from, hey, Bruce from Ventura, California, 63 and beautiful today. Remember shooting skeet off the rear of the ship and the elegant white glove service back then. Oh, Scott, that you that's right. You triggered the memory there. Very well done. That's right. You used to be able to shoot a skeet gun, <laughs> a rifle, off the back of the cruise ship. <laughs> oh, of course. There were no other ships around. Uh, you were at sea. Uh, you couldn't see land anywhere. You're in international waters, and you're not firing on a naval vessel, okay? So you're covering all the bases here. Uh, <laughs> but, yes, you could shoot. You could have skeet shooting off the back of a cruise ship. Uh, in the uh, 
60s, I think, 50s and 60s, they also let you shoot golf balls off the back. But there were treaties signed. Uh, international treaties have been signed with um, various nations to outlaw that kind of thing. Now, not don't want to pollute the seas. Don't want to, you know, don't want to put buckshot in there <laughs> and a bunch of used titleist golf balls. <laughs> so they've kind of put an end to that good old day practice thing. But you know, uh, I guess you could, you know, pretend to shoot skeet shoot on on some of the arcade games. But I don't think there's an arcade game anymore that lets you do that. I think those. Those are gone. <laughs> and, <coughs> but golf simulators, uh, some ships have them, some ships don't. That was a big deal for a while. I think golf simulating machines were pretty popular on cruise ships up until about five or eight or ten years ago. And even then, even those have been practically eliminated. Uh, golf, like a golf uh, netting area, you know, some cruise lines have a little oh, really tucked away in the middle of nowhere on the top level back corner of the ship there might be a little area where you can you hit a golf ball in a netting area but that i think that's even been eliminated big time the only thing left for golf now is mini golf and that's actually popular there's a lot of mini golf courses on a number of the ships out there uh but uh yeah skeet shooting it's all go it's all over <laughs> skyhawk 1987 turbos here how you doing 48 and cloudy in charlotte north carolina 75 on Thursday. Oh, it's getting warm. Thank goodness for that. Welcome back. Steve Bartley says, I shot skeet and hit golf balls off uh, off the back on the way to Hawaii, 1964. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the vintage. Absolutely, that's the vintage. Oh, my. Yeah, I remember watching uh, An Affair to Remember. I've seen the movie itself, also Sleeping in Seattle, of course. Um, and, of course, we all know, as, as, as uh, a tearjerker as the movie was, An Affair to Remember, uh, we all know that the uh, the the Dirty Dozen, as they refer to in the Sleepless in Seattle, I mean that that movie had emotion too. I mean, you know, when they were when they were raiding that German thing there, and and the one guy was you know th shooting the throwing these hand grenades down the chimneys, and then he gets shot just before he gets back to the truck, and oh, it was tragic, you know. Uh, uh, I'm just quoting the movie. I'm just, you know, you know, don't mind me. Uh, anyway, uh, what was neat about the fair to remember was I, I remember watching the movie and uh, Cary Grant would get a telegram and he would, uh, they would call out for him, the bell, you know, the little guy with the bell cap. He'd be walking around. You have like a silver tray with the, with the uh, telegram laying flat on it. I'm sure they must have had a paperweight on top of it or otherwise it would have blown away on the, sh on the deck. And they'd be calling out, you know, Mr. So-and-so, Mr. So-and-so. And then, he find you. You'd hand them the. He'd hand you the telegraph. I don't know if they had any cash on them to pay the guy a tip or something. I would imagine those days you probably did, but uh, that was how you communicated in those days. If you want to get a message from shore to ship or ship to shore, uh, up until about the early fifties. But uh, yeah, that's a time gone by. Skeet shooting off the back. My goodness. So and for the horse is saying, I remember high tea on the Norway. Very formal white glove service. Shot skeet on the Nordic Prince back in 89. See, that's not that far ago. 30, almost 30 years ago, uh, shot skeet. Although I think they've kind of stopped it. Uh, the white glove service. Oh, yes, folks. Uh, this this is an era that is long gone. I mean, this just doesn't exist anymore. Uh, Thomas Arnold saying, hey, Bruce, just watched Don's family vacations and heard the MSC is changing the menu and have a handle on the small issues we will see. This is referring to the MSC Seaside. Uh, good one, Thomas. Thanks for that. Yeah, you know, the MSC Seaside, <laughs> they have got a number of issues that they're going to have to get their hands around. Uh, that is, uh, that has been a colossal, uh, you know, screw up from the moment uh, that ship was launched. I mean, there has been trust, trouble, at so many levels on this ship, uh, from food to service to, to uh, you know, shore excursions to the poop smell to the leaky faucets to the on and on it goes, um, and uh, and then people are are, are a little uh, perturbed about. Um, uh, I read something about one one passenger was saying that he had had a uh, he had been upsold or he had, he purchased a package, quote unquote. Um, it was a. Um, some kind of a drink package at dinner, some kind of, a, I'm, I, I don't have the exact wording on this, but as I read it uh, or, or listened to it, talked about how um, he was entitled to order beer at dinner time. 
and it was one beer. <laughs> so he ordered his dinner, and he ordered a beer, and they brought him a beer in a glass, I guess, and he finished the beer halfway through the dinner. He asked for another beer, and they said, well, I'll, we'll charge you for that. <laughs> so the so-called drink package with dinner is one drink with one dinner. So you do the math, you got six or seven nights, you get six or seven drinks. Now, I don't know how much this cost extra, <laughs> but it didn't go over too well. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> a, number of, a number of issues have been circulating around the MSCC side, and that's interesting, Thomas. You heard that. <laughs> that's something. Oh, man. Uh, okay. Um, trends. Okay. Now and then. Okay. Uh, the old days, this is up to 10 years ago. Uh, this was not uncommon on cruise ships. Uh, 10 years ago, most, uh, I know Holland America had it, and I think a few other ships had it. They had a specialty restaurant on board already 10 years ago, but just one. You, you had maybe six of your meals in the main dining room because they had five-star food, five-star service. But maybe one night, maybe, uh, you know, the cruise is an anniversary cruise between, you know, for you and your wife, um, you and your husband, and you are going to take one night to have a specialty meal in the specialty restaurant. Well, that was six star. And that's where that white glove service comes from. And you've got the, uh, you know, the best china, the best crystal goblets for the wine and sherry, the china cups for coffee, uh, the finest silverware, I mean, the linens, I mean, it was spectacular. And the room, the specialty restaurant would be like a, be kind of like a French style restaurant, something like high end French. And it would be very uh, exquisite in there, very exclusive. There might only be room for 20 people at a time, 30 people at a time. It would not be a large, <clears throat> a large area, couldn't hold 200. Uh, there'd be, you know, music played in there. It would be a away from the hustle and bustle of the promenade deck. You know, it'd be tucked over here. It might well have um, ocean view windows uh, looking out, uh, but uh, but it would be a kind of a tucked away private little place. And you'd pay extra for that. It would be, a, you know, $20, $25 charge per person. But, oh, boy, would you be spoiled rotten in there? I mean, it would just be, you know, Primo, I mean, absolutely primo food, primo service. The best waiters would be in there. Uh, none of the rookies would be in that room. Not a chance. Uh, even the, you know, even the staff handling dirty dishes would be the best ones they had. I mean, it was, it was a cut above the dining room, which, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, dining rooms in cruise ships were really, really luxurious in every respect. But uh, today, uh, we got the specialty restaurants and. Uh, you uh, you uh, go to the main dining room now, and uh, you know the main dining room. It's uh, it's all casual. Uh, you can now wear shorts to the main dining room uh, for dinner. You're allowed to do that now. Uh, you would be you you went to a special restaurant ten years ago. You didn't go in there with a suit and tie. I don't even, don't even think about it. You wouldn't they wouldn't let you in. You had to have a suit and tie to get in the main to the to the specialty. The main dining room on formal nights, you definitely had to have a suit and jacket. So you had to. Uh, uh, 10, 12 years ago, you could get away with what I'm wearing here, but a jacket over it. Yeah, but I'm still pushing the limits of that. I could go in with a shirt uh, that would be opened here and a jacket. Yeah, but they'd, they'd kind of prefer the tie. But on formal nights, tuxedos would be really what was expected. And that's what the passengers were expecting other passengers to wear. The guys all wore tuxedos. Well, if you went to the specialty restaurant 10, 15 years ago, you had your tails on. I mean, it was, especially if it's an anniversary dinner, your, your wife's getting all dolled up. She was in the, uh, she was in the hairdressing salon getting her hair done, got her nails done. Uh, and then she put on her nice dress and heels. And then you went out to that specialty restaurant, really premium. Today, specialty restaurants are coming down a notch in uh, that, that classiness, uh, you know, meter, the class meter we used to use. Uh, you know, now, now, uh, you go to the Italian restaurant on board, it's 20 bucks more, 25 bucks more. And it's, uh, you know, it's like, a, I don't know, in Canada, we have an East Side Mario's. It's like a chain. It's like a, it's just an Italian restaurant. Nothing, nothing incredible. Um, 
you know, the steakhouses are still nicer because uh, they're trying to get you to drop some coin. Uh, I did see uh, I did see Jim Zim's video the other day where he was on the MSCC side. He ordered the porterhouse steak in the steakhouse, and his wife had uh, another meal, uh, a couple of drinks, and he got the bill one hundred and seven dollars. And he said it wasn't very good. It was not very good. He ended up uh, two days later. He was, he was talking about how he's in the Grand Cayman, and he was to he went to uh, Jimmy Buffett's uh, restaurant. He had a steak there. Thirty-seven dollars was the tab, far superior to the MSCC side's uh, steakhouse. He was not impressed uh, with that whole experience, as some of you know. Anyway, uh, yeah, the old days, it was uh, it was a whole other world. If you went to the one specialty restaurant on the ship, that one specialty restaurant, yeah, yeah, that was really special. Today, not so much anymore. It's becoming a little more kind of common, and I found that to be uh, quite interesting. Um, the other thing about uh, dining room, uh, the regular dining room, up until about 10 years ago, five years ago maybe, it's really happened in the last five, 10 years. It really shifted. Uh, no more lobster tails, no more prime rib, no more uh, T-bone steaks, uh, high-end cuts, like the really good, no, uh, not in the dining room anymore. Uh, now you're down to uh, spaghetti meatballs, lasagna, uh, you know, maybe you're into, uh, you're going to get a little bit of, uh, you know, pasta with uh, the cream sauce. Uh, they might have bratwursts, they'll have... Uh, uh, you know they'll they'll have they'll have meals you know but it's it's going to be kind of uh, uh, definitely a drop down six star five star no no four star four star three star dining uh, it's just not that high end anymore that that food that high end food over to the specialty restaurants is where you go now and you're going to pay twenty forty fifty seventy dollars each extra for that for that meal that's just the way it is now unless you're going to a dining room. Uh, say on Norwegian, you're in the Haven, the, 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 that level, uh, then they'll have their own restaurant up there uh, that may or may not be included. I'm not sure if they charge extra for Haven restaurants or not. They might be included in the price, but you're already, you've already, you prepaid it. You, uh, you paid the price when you booked the room and uh, you know, you'll, get, you'll get your steak up there. But in the regular restaurant, nope, not anymore. But to be fair, I'll be, you know, I want to be objective here and I'd love to get your comments on it. Um, my parents went on a cruise to Hawaii in the 80s, and it cost them $2,500 each to go. It's like a 10-day cruise or something like that. Uh, that's $5,000 today, five grand each to go on a cruise. So would you spend $5,000 today on a cruise? Uh, if you were spending $5,000 today, you could definitely get the uh, Nor Norwegian Cruise Line Haven Suite. A nice balcony room up there in the Haven. You could definitely go on a Viking Ocean cruise um, easily for five thousand dollars a person, easily. Um, and you would it would be all inclusive. You 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 would you get it all, including your drinks. It would be all inclusive. I'm thinking even the, the higher class. Uh, five grand today uh, for a one week, ten day cruise. Five hundred a day per person. Six hundred a day per person. Yeah, you're you're going to get what our parents got. But they paid for it. Our parents weren't able to get the six ninety nine, seven hundred ninety nine dollars super deal cruise like we can get today. So, gotta compare apples to apples. I have to be fair on that. Uh, let's see. A couple comments have been coming in here. I just want to make sure I'm staying up to speed with everybody. Um, Teresa is saying that's good to hear regarding the uh, MSCC side. Debbie Emanuel's here. Hi, Bruce, Northern California, sixty four again today, and air full of pollen. Sorry. Uh, super hard to complain about the beautiful weather, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you got to take the pollen. Uh, Teresa saying, I remember the uh, the uh, first upper class dining room on the ships. Yes, and then Sylvan was saying, I remember the MDR on Holland America Zandam being a member of Chan de Rotissier. Very select indeed. Yes, the the main the, remember the main dining room. It was five star dining. In the main dining for everybody, main dining room, absolutely fantastic. Debbie is saying, "Do you know? Uh, do you know if Nor Norwegian Cruise Line asks for actual formal dress in the Haven restaurants, 
or just casual like the rest of the ship? I don't have the answer off the top of my head. If anyone has that, by all means, let me know. Anyone out there watching, do you know the answer to that question? This is your chance. Type on in. Say hi to us. Tell us where you're from. What's your high temperature today? Say hi. There's a question for you. The Haven on Norwegian Cruise Lines. If you're going into one of their restaurants in the Haven level, that level of the ship, do you need to wear formal clothing in there or can you go casual? Good question. Uh, Sylvain saying Sabatini on Princess. Gorgeous food. La Cucina on Nor Norwegian on par with Olive Garden. There you, there you go. There. Thank you, Sylvain, for that. I was tr trying to remember the name of Olive Garden. I couldn't remember it. I know out I was thinking of the Outback for the steakhouses. Uh, yeah, the, the Olive Garden is a middle class, middle of the road eatery. And that's what's starting to show up on the cruise ships. And they want extra for it. They want you to pay $20, $25 to go in there. Well, gee whiz, uh, $25 a person, 50 bucks. If I go to the Olive Garden in, uh, you know, uh, suburban uh, San Diego, uh, it's 50 bucks. It's just the same price. Well, I'm on a cruise ship and I'm expecting, I think I should get more. I just feel I should get more. Now, maybe I'm being out of line thinking that way, but I keep reminding myself, yeah, Bruce, but you didn't pay five grand to get on this ship. So why should you get lobster tails and high, high-end quality Italian food uh, for a $6.99 cruise when you're only paying 20 bucks extra for this meal? If the meal were 50 bucks extra, maybe it'd be a little higher end than that. I'm just saying, but... I don't know. Just a thought. Uh, Heather Young is saying, uh, give this video a thumbs up because he is awesome. Uh, Heather, you're you're wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> yes, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Buttons are here. Uh, Teresa McFarland, have to pay $30 for lobster in the main dining room now if you want it. And see, there you, there you go. Uh, yeah, it, it's over. And do you know that the uh, – I don't know if any of you folks know this, but uh, used to get the butter – uh, with the lobster be melted butter. Uh, check it a little closer now. It might be melted margarine. It's a little lower standards. Um, Charlie Bombs here. Hi, Bruce. Last year, I got lobster tails on the last formal night. Also, lamb shank. This was grandeur, 12 days in December 2017. Right on. You know, there's little pockets of hope yet. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great to hear, Charlie. Thanks for that. Uh, Richard Kormaski saying, on the last cruise, November, Princess had steak and lobster tail. One night, uh, uh, one each portion of back-to-back. -back. However, the tail was maybe four ounces. Yeah, they're really tiny. Yeah, that would be the lower-grade lobster. Money, 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 money. Cut, cut, cut. Uh, Richard says they also had a small, uh, I'm going to say sirloin steak. Six ounces with it. Yeah, yeah. Small steak, small tail, very tiny. Um, the bean counters are taking hold of the cruise ship business. Uh, <laughs> Mark Lost Traveler is saying, hello, all you crazy cruise people. 79 and cloudy in Orlando. Uh, he's one of those crazy cruise people. <laughs> and he's also a crazy flyer. Welcome, Mark. Welcome back. Uh, good to have you here. We're talking about then and now. Uh, cruise ships before the old days and now. And in some cases, we're only talking about five and 10 years ago, talking about then versus now. The changes are happening at light speed and they're profane, profound. Um, I'm just going to take a look here at another a couple of uh, uh, points that I made. 20 years ago, it was not unusual for a cruise ship to have 1,500 passengers. Uh, that was kind of the norm. Uh, that was a big size ship. Um, and it was after, it was you know, in the last 20 years, we started to see these so-called behemoths show up, and that was at first two thousand plus passenger ships. Remember the Queen, uh, the Queen Elizabeth, uh, uh, the ship that uh, was doing the transatlantics in the fifties and the sixties. Uh, the Queen Elizabeth was the largest cruise ship afloat in the sixties, at two thousand passengers. It was an absolute behemoth of a ship, with massive staff numbers. And they call that a city on the sea, 2,000 passengers. Today, a ship with those dimensions that the Queen Elizabeth had, how long it was, uh, it now has 18 decks high of rooms, and you're, you're looking at 4,000-plus passengers, double the capacity 
of the, uh, the, the QE, the Q Queen Elizabeth. The Queen Mary, which retired uh, before her, same thing. She had almost 2,000 passengers as well. And, and those were ungodly numbers. Those were just uh, numbers that the people couldn't fathom. In, in, the, in the 50s, if you were taking a transatlantic cruise from uh, London, England, to New York, you uh, would work your way to the Waterloo train station uh, in London by cab or however you got there, uh, because at the Waterloo train station, there was a train, a, an exclusive chartered private train called the Cunarder that took you to Southampton nonstop. And it was specifically designed, they say, to handle passengers and their luggage. <laughs> And so you got on, as soon as you got on the Cunarder railroad uh, train, as soon as you got on that passenger train, it's all over. You're on the ship. Nothing to worry about. You're not going to miss your ship. You're not going to be late. The ship will wait for you. They'll wait for their own train. That train would go right to the pier in Southampton, and it would come into a covered station. So if it was raining, you didn't get wet. Your bags didn't get wet. And you would transfer right from the train up to, the, uh, up to the, your ticket agents there and you'd get right on your cruise ship. That was how this massive 2,000 passenger ship operated in the 50s. Can you imagine that today? A 2,000 passenger Carnival cruise line, and you can get on a private train in say, uh, oh, I don't know, at the, uh, you know, at an airport 20 miles away and be whisked to your to your ship right there. No, no, no get, get a cab. <laughs> <laughs> now at LAX, yes, you could take a shuttle bus. You could take a bus to your cruise ship. Yeah, it's a, it's twenty bucks extra, but you can do it. But in those days, back in the fifties, the Cunarder rail train, and they had refreshments on board. You were already enjoying your libations on the train as you were chugging your way down to Southampton. Those days are gone, gone, gone. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, today, 5,000 passenger ships, of course, is, is not unusual. 30 years ago um, and before, um, if you were a first-class passenger, you had all-inclusive everything. It was all done. Uh, now, uh, the hustle is on. They're coming after us for the drink package. They're hustling us for the specialty dining package now. They're hustling us for the coffee package the soda pop package they're uh, go, they're after us on board and you folks i you folks who cruise a lot you know this those endless bloody announcements on the pa system where they've got a sale on on gold chains by the ounce or they've got the art auction today or they've got this going on they're hustling for every nickel and dime they won't leave us alone i wanted to get on a cruise ship to relax and i'm just being you know, just pecked away at <laughs> to uh, to spend, spend, spend. They won't leave us alone because they got you on board for five ninety nine, four ninety nine, six ninety nine, whatever that deal. Now they're going to get us for the rest, and uh, you got to be careful. You got to be strong, people. Got to be strong. <laughs> uh, what do we got here? Mark the Lost Traveler saying even the peanut butter sandwiches got smaller. <laughs> It's just not, it's just not fair. It's just not right. Angela A saying, hi, everybody. 81 degrees here in Tampa. <sighs> wonderful, wonderful. I think they're trying to open cruising to the masses, which will lower quality, unfortunately. And you are right. But I will say this. Um, on the one hand, uh, there are people who can cruise today that could not cruise 15 years ago. Um, there are there there are uh, you know the 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 price of admission to get on a cruise ship has come down in relative and real terms even after inflation it's just cheaper and that means more people have a shot at taking a cruise vacation than in the 50s or the 60s. Um, I know that when I crossed the Atlantic Ocean in 1962, coming back to Canada from Europe, uh, that cruise ship that that we had taken. Um, which called the Homeric from Home Lines, that cruise ship would do in the summertime these transatlantic crossings. But in the fall and in the winter, uh, it would do uh, Caribbean cruises. And it would launch from uh, uh, New York City and head south to the Caribbean. And um, uh, even that cruise, even those cruises, 
you had to be you had to be upper middle class to afford it. The the the, the money that you had to come up with was just unfathomable. Um, uh, keep in mind, of course, in nineteen you know nineteen sixty sixty two, there were jets, yes, but not like there are today. I mean, today we have thousands of jet craft aircraft everywhere, but in sixty two. Uh, jets were only three years into the business, and they were basically the bigger, the bigger variety, and they were doing the transatlantic uh, and cross-country hauls, uh, and then you had prop aircraft, turboprop aircraft, uh, four-engine propeller aircraft, you know, heavy, ha handling the rest. But the idea of uh, of grabbing a, a a plane ride from Chicago to uh, to Miami for you know a one-week getaway. That was a big deal. That that was mega expensive. You would take the train, generally, and you'd do the overnighter, uh, and then you'd have a week or two in Miami in a hotel, and then you'd go the door the other direction back by train again. Um, cruise ship. Uh, uh, there was no such thing as cruise lines running out of Miami and doing the one week Caribbean routine like today, where they have this down to a science. Uh, the the logistics of uh, Port Canaveral and the uh, the port in Miami. To, to realize that uh, five cruise ships can come in one day uh, into Port Canaveral, four or five of them, offload, what is it, uh, 15, 20,000 passengers and their luggage <laughs> and all the garbage, <laughs> and then load up 20,000 passengers, all their luggage and all the food and provisions, and be gone by four in the afternoon. Unthinkable in the, uh, in the 50s. Uh, just, it just couldn't be done. Physically, logistically, it was impossible to get done. And so uh, uh, to do a cruise was a very high-end uh, uh, expense. And uh, my parents, were they knew they were lucky. Uh, they were truly blessed because my dad was with the Canadian Army. The Army chartered or, or booked half the ship on the way to Germany and half the ship on the way back for all these members of the armed services and their wives and kids. Um, and so they got like a deal, some kind of a deal for that. But it was the only economical way to do it at, at that time. And um, my parents knew they could never have afforded that cruise themselves. They could never have paid for the transatlantic in the class that we were in uh, to do that uh, to do that ship. When my father came from Germany to Canada in 1952, he was in third class. Uh, he was right at the back of the bus. And, uh, and yet for him, uh, he, he ate royally. He talked about how the food was fantastic because what he was eating at home, in Germany before he got out to uh, versus the, what was on the ship divine divine all you can eat he was never hungry and he hadn't hadn't had that most of his lifetime it was amazing okay uh, what do we got here uh, Thomas Arnold is saying uh, Hall America still served lobster and New York steaks in the main dining room plus you can get a New York State steak every night and I will admit also uh, Thomas I know that my uh, Last cruise on uh, Princess, which was about a year and a bit ago, uh, they had a New York steak, a strip steak available in the dining room if you wanted it. And But I didn't see very many takers. I don't, I don't know why, but uh, it was available. Teresa is saying, I think most ships, uh, you can still get a New York strip loin every day. It's just some of the ships have cut out the lobster tail or made the lobster tail a lot smaller. And I agree with you that too. I, I think I was on the Epic. Um, we had one night where we had the uh, steak and lobster or the prime rib and lobster maybe. And it was small, but it was a lobster tail. But it was one night only. And uh, yeah, not, uh, not often. And uh, all the other good stuff wasn't available anymore. Uh, Mark Lost Traveler saying, I remember on the Epic, you got uh, one 16-ounce uh, steak, and I think the lobster tail was a 10-ounce for 25 bucks. One year later, uh, it was a 12-ounce steak and a small lobster tail, 50 bucks. Yeah, yeah, it was a, it's a double hit. They got smaller, and they got more expensive. Um, Mark Lost Traveler also says, I think they, they peck at you because uh, – because most of the tickets to get on the most of the fares were under five hundred dollars. Yeah, there's so many ins like of course the inside rooms and the ocean view rooms super cheap. And then on the balcony, if you've got deals, 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 and they're giving you a hundred dollar shipboard credit and they're giving you this and giving you that, you figure out what you're really paying on a on a fare. You know, for the fare, um, you really should be getting uh, you know uh, uh, theoretically you should be getting uh, uh, meatloaf and mashed potatoes and gravy. <laughs> That's what you should be getting. But to get the higher end quality food, now they're charging dearly for it and they're making you pay the extra big time. And, and that's what's happening. 
Uh, and as, as long as the customers keep booking, I mean, you know, if we went on strike and said, no way, I'm not going to take a cruise uh, at any price unless I know I'm getting this quality of food, the cruise lines are going to have to raise the fares. Now the question is, well, geez, if we raise the fare by $200 a person across the board, you know, from an inside going from $399 to $599, and then the balcony going from $699 to $899 or $899 to $1,099, Will they come? Will will the food be enough if we promise they get steak and lobster? And the, I don't think so. Uh, I think we have uh, a certain class of people will say, "Yeah, that's a good deal. You bet." But the masses, and uh, you know, I hate to say it that way, but I think the masses will go. I can't afford the thousand ninety nine. I want to pay four ninety nine for an inside room, and I'll eat uh, fried chicken in the uh, buffet with fries. And uh, I'll have a bun on the side. Uh, I'm prepared to do it because I'm on a ship. I'm, I'm on this $800 million uh, engineering marvel. And the views are spectacular. And the weather is great. And I love fried chicken anyway. And I guess that's that's been the thinking on the cruise lines. They've been kind of going that direction. Um, what was it? Teresa saying, it drives me crazy that uh, all the upselling they try to do on the ships. This is This is the price we have to pay for that deal. And uh, we have to ask ourselves, uh, selves, <laughs> uh, is it that important to you to, to get this mega, mega discount for a cruise? And will you tolerate this stuff? The announcements on board, the art auction, the, the, uh, you know, the special presentation of the whatever, uh, the, diamond, uh, the diamond and jewelry show in the middle of the uh, Explorer of the Seas or in the middle of the hallway on these mega walkways that the ships have. Will we tolerate that because we got such a good deal? Or will we cough up a little more money and get away from that entirely? Now, that can be done either by going to the top of the ship for the Haven class or the yacht club on MSC or uh, going to C the cabana, the Cubana, the Cuba Havana uh, deck at the back of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Carnival uh, to get away from the maddening hordes and the crowds. Will we pay that to get it um, or not? Or do we pay even more and go on to a Viking uh, cruise, all inclusive, or Oceana or Seaborne? And now you're, you're dropping the coin. But now you are entering. You're entering the 80s. Uh, you're entering the 1980s, where you got everything except it's 2018 amenities today. So, you know, you have to you have to decide, right? Um, Mark, the lost traveler, saying that's why the food is more expensive and especially restaurants. Richard Kormaski, Bruce, a cruise tip for Princess. Every year they have a sale, July, early August, when you book balcony and above for a cruise in the winter to summer following year, you get a free drink package, booze and coffee. That's nothing wrong with that deal. Uh, if you can, uh, if you can score that, uh, if you can plan your trip that far ahead and get a good deal on the uh, package. They're rewarding you. The cruise line is saying, look, you commit to us uh, early. We'll commit to you with a package deal like this. That's a fair, it's a fair deal, fair trade. And if you're prepared to and able to commit to, to that uh, time frame, make it worth your while. Become a shareholder of Car Carnival and get an extra hundred dollar credit because of a shareholder credit from uh, princess as well because carnival owns princess so that's good to know um let me think here uh okay uh here we go richard's also saying and water now uh, and water now uh, <laughs> as a perk <clears throat> 15 drinks per person as a perk uh Teresa mcfarland good to know richard uh, george is here george mccarr greetings bruce late entry here hi george welcome to the club we're talking about now and then this is right up your alley uh we're talking about cruise ships today versus yesterday we're talking about cruise ships today compared to ocean liners yesterday. And we've been going over the various stories. Mark the Lost Traveler is saying, like on Disney, every time you turn around, they are taking your picture. Then they try to sell them to you, which can cost you more than the cruise. <laughs> the problem, Mark, is if you're on the Disney line, you're probably with kids. And if you're with the kids and the kids get to take a look at the photos, big problem. Because now, Try to tell them you can't have those photos. Hey, good luck. Uh, yeah, you want to you want a photo with Mickey Mouse? Uh, the ship photographer is taking that photo. Hey, you're not taking that photo. Ship photographer is taking a photo. Yeah, Skyhawk uh, <laughs> 1987 Turbo saying inflation uh, inflation of good food has gone up 
So that trickles down to cruise passengers or anyone for that matter. Bruce, what cruise line would you choose for a first timer? Uh, depends on the first timer, uh, Skyhawk, because it, you know, depending on your age and your circumstances, kids, no kids, uh, retired, not retired, uh, honeymoon, you know, or, or, or just, you know, 45 year old couple going on a cruise for a week. It all varies, doesn't it? And, uh, uh, if you're uh, kind of like me and you're in the, uh, I'm in the 62 uh, age bracket here. So I'm going to say 55 and older. Um, there are certain cruise lines and certain kinds of ships and certain itineraries and onboard activities that we do and do not want. Uh, we think we're 17 up here, but we, uh, we uh, bend over to tie up our shoelaces and there's that groan that comes out all the time. I don't know where that started from, but, uh, you know, it happens. Uh, and, uh, we also get tired earlier <laughs> and we seem to be able to eat forever. <laughs> so there's certain cruises for us that work. Um, Holland America is great. Celebrity's great. Uh, Norwegian can be great. Uh, same carnival can be great. I mean, they, they can all be great, but don't go on a three day booze cruise on a carnival cruise ship at spring break as a 60 year old. Don't do it. Uh, that's not a good idea. Um, so you want to look at a one week cruise. I would say Mexican Riviera or or Caribbean, great way to start. If you're in your, say, between 30 and 55 and no children on board with you, just uh, you're, you're, you and a traveling companion, uh, your secretary or your wife, <laughs> or it's the girl and the, 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 you know, the, it's mom and her boyfriend or her husband, either way, uh, there are certain cruises for that. And, um, uh, depending on how active you are, if you're very active, you're physically, you know, fit. Well, maybe, maybe Royal Caribbean. You know, uh, get a Royal Caribbean ship. Get on the Harmony of the Seas. Enjoy all the fun that they have. And Labadee, the private uh, spot there in Haiti, with the zip lines and all the other stuff. Great idea. Now, if you got kids, if you're like a 35 year old mom and dad, two children that are like eight and 12 or 10 and 12, well, you've got choices. And like Mark the Lost Traveler is saying here, you can go on Disney. And uh, the kids will probably really love it. Uh, the younger they are, the better. If they're eight and ten, oh, home run, home run ball. Uh, they're gonna have a blast. Uh, Mom and dad will be okay too. Oh, Disney's kind of nice cruise line, uh, but you're gonna pay. You're gonna that'll cost you. So as a first timer, it's one of those. It's a special, real special deal. We're doing Disney. Go for it. But otherwise, take Carnival. Go on a Carnival cruise. Family of four, economic, and uh, seven-day uh, Caribbean cruise on one of their new ships. Take the Horizon. Take the Vista. Fantastic. Uh, that'll be a great first time. Now, if you're younger than that, if you're a college student, uh, recent university graduate, uh, two guys, two girls uh, looking to enjoy themselves, have a party, find a booze cruise. Yeah, go three to five days and make sure it's heading to Mexico, <laughs> Cancun, Cozumel. And it's party time. It is party time. Uh, and look, my wife keeps talking to me once in a while, talking about, ah, you know, we're, the girls are kind of thinking of getting together. Well, when she says the girls, she's not talking about my daughter and her friends. She's talking about herself, my 62-year-old wife, and her girlfriends that are 60, 62 years old. The girls. And they want to go on a booze cruise. Yeah, they want to go on a booze cruise. And uh, they want to... Uh, Enjoy themselves and make fools of themselves for four or five days among strangers. <laughs> and I'm not invited, and I'm grateful. Uh, and so for her, she'll go on a carnival cruise. She'll go on a booze cruise on a carnival cruise. You won't go for the headbanging music from uh, Ted, New Ted Nugent or uh, or uh, anyone else, but she'll uh, she'll she'll take a three five day cruise and they'll have a blast. Uh, I keep telling her, why don't you guys take a one week cruise out of Los Angeles since we live in Western Canada? Take the uh, Princess Cruise down to Mexico for a week. You, you got three stops. You got Mazatlan, you got you got uh, Cabo, and you got Puerto Vallarta. You gals will grab a cab, one of those vans, the poor cabbie, and you'll have that cab driver drive you down to one of those Jimmy Buffett ocean view beachside bars, and you can liquor it up for two bucks a beer and two bucks a drink all afternoon, and then you can pour yourselves back into the cab and get back to the ship and then you know recover there uh why not do that you get seven days and uh, you can really tie one on and maybe the last day you can sleep it off <laughs> there's a little suggestion for you it's it depends what your situation is you really you got to do your homework you got to watch 
traveling with Bruce and ask Bruce and his uh, his friends here for that advice and we'll give it to him. Uh, Clutch Burner is here. Clutch, welcome. Uh, last year, we took a four-night cruise uh, in D Disney Magic uh, and a steak option was on the menu every night, although it was by far one of the most expensive short cruises my wife and I ever went on. Yes, sir. Uh, Disney is not on sale. Uh, there's no deal there. Uh, notice the park, uh, Disney World, uh, Disneyland. They just raised the prices again. They they up the cost of the entry to get into the park. I do the math. I shake my head now because I think, my God, for what you're paying to go into the Disneyland Park or Disney World Park, how many rides are you going to get in? Four, five, uh, and what are you paying? A hundred and something more, two hundred dollars. I don't even know what it is. It's thirty bucks a ride. Forty. I don't know what that number is. It's 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 getting beyond me to be honest uh mark lost traveler been there done that clutch yeah <laughs> yes mark has uh mark paid a few credit card bills off on the disney cruises over a long period of time richard koromaski did it for 24 days plus spent money to, to spend plus spend money to spend cheers <laughs> uh skyhawk clutch disney is always going to be more expensive because it's disney ug Mark Lost Traveler, like I said before, I'm still paying for Disney 20 years later, laughing out loud. Sylvan is saying, uh, upselling falls upon deaf ears with me. Bark all you want. I won't buy anything I don't need, and I don't buy pictures I have to Photoshop when I get home. <laughs> right on, Sylvan. That's, uh, you know, you can limit your spending on a cruise ship, folks. You can really control it. Uh, there's certain things that, uh, you know, you may want to pay for or not if it's a, you know, if it's a graduation cruise for your son or daughter, and it, you know there's three or four of their them graduating as a group, and mom and dad are along, and grandma and grandpa have come along, and it's a special one week. Let let's have some fun with these kids. Might be the last time we can travel with them because after this, they're not going to hang out with us with us anymore. They got jobs, they've got student debts. They're out of here. Uh, I get the ship photographer to take. Uh, Formal night photos, you bet. Get the girls and guys with their gowns and tails, get them all dressed up and have a professional photographer take the photos. Yeah, and I'll be in there as proud papa, you bet. But uh, you can; those can really add up. Those expenses can really add up. You got to be careful. Uh, Skyhawk saying, I'm 44, no kids. Skyhawk, uh, Carnival, uh, a Carnival, Royal Caribbean, uh, a Norwegian, Princess, all in America. Uh, you got, you got, you, you're in that sweet spot. You can really go any direction you want, and you can go economic. Uh, you know, you you can do what uh, what we're doing here. We're we're talking about how we find deals all the time. Get get over to vacationstogo.com and and look for a balcony cruise, maybe a Caribbean cruise, where you know maybe Holland America Eurodam or Westerdam for under seven hundred bucks a week for a balcony deal. Beautiful ship, great service, great food. You won't go. You can't go wrong. You'll be you'll be just fine. Uh, I would investigate first time, first ever cruise. Boy, you, you'll you're not going to regret that. Uh, Mark Lost Traveler is saying same for me, Sylvan, with the photos. Marcus uh, Mark uh, Macarauer is saying a 69 cloudy all day. The village is Central Florida. Uh, nice weather, George. Compared to us, uh, we're about 32 Fahrenheit here if we're lucky. Uh, Skyhawk is saying, I was thinking a Royal Caribbean ship, and you're thinking right. That's another way to go. Teresa saying, can't go wrong with Royal. Love that cruise line. Teresa, I know you'll love it. You're going on Royal Saturday, she says. She's on the Royal Caribbean on Saturday. <sighs> Fantastic. Uh, Skyhawk is saying, awesome, Teresa. Mark Lost Traveler, yes, T. Then it's us on the Norwegian getaway because she does the first cruise on Royal Caribbean. She gets off of that. She turns right around. She's getting on the uh, getaway. Mark, the Lost Traveler, is on the same cruise. They're meeting up. Teresa says, yes, indeed, Mark. It's our second time on the getaway, she says. Uh, Steve Bartley saying, I put together a, a church group trip to Disneyland in 1993. Park admission was $10.80. Yeah. <clears throat> is that the cost of a beer now uh, with tax? $10.80? Um, wow. Uh, what's that? 35 years ago, though. Let's be real. But on the other hand, hey, 35 years ago? $10.80, let's call that a $20, $25 bill today in inflation adjusted. You can't get diddly squat in Disney World for $25. Bucks. You, you, I, not a chance. Unbelievable, Steve. Uh, Clutch uh, Burner saying uh, Nor uh, Nor Norwegian Cruise Line has a great option for third and fourth guests. A family of four 
can cruise relatively cheaper than going on a Carnival Royal Cruise. You're right, Clutch. I've seen these deals. Uh, they'll bring them out from time to time where they'll do the, uh, you know, mom and dad, the, the two adults. They'll pay whatever the fare is for their deal. It might be, you know, might be on sale, five ninety nine each, six ninety nine each, and then the third and fourth passenger can sail for free. Just pay the port charges and taxes. Might be one hundred twenty, hundred fifty bucks a passenger. Well, geez, two kids, two hundred forty to three hundred dollars for the two kids. All the food. Oh man, they'll eat that much. That's a fantastic option. Absolutely right. Mark the Lost Traveler saying, I remember when Disney World was thirty bucks for a one day ticket. Now $125 in one day. Glad I'm a season ticket holder for the last 30 years. Works out to 65 bucks today. And uh, yeah, it's, it's not cheap. And there's a reason that the, the Disney stock is a member of the Dow 30 Stock Exchange. They, they own, they own uh, ABC Television Network. Uh, they get their movie studios. They got the parks. They got the, three, the cruise lines. They are massive. And of course, they have their hotels on their properties too. Big, big company. Uh, Mawa, Mawa, Mawa Taga is here. Mawa Taga, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Welcome. 39 degrees here in Utah. Welcome to the channel. Way to go. This is great. Uh, Thomas Arnold grew up in Burbank, went to Disneyland when, uh, uh, when every year only cost my parents 10 bucks in the 60s and early 70s. Yep, yep. But 10 bucks in the 60s was a lot of money. Uh, I remember when I was a kid that, uh, uh, childhood memory of mine, uh, my dad and I uh, hopped in the car and drove to the KFC, the Kentucky Fried Chicken franchise in our town, because it was a Sunday and mom didn't cook on Sundays. Mom didn't have to cook on Sunday. Monday to Saturday, you know, she we'd have like a, three meals and two, two, three nights of leftovers. Leftovers were great. But Sundays, my dad would forbid my mother to do anything. No housework, nothing in the kitchen. Just watch TV and relax. And uh, uh, once in a while, we'd be able to convince them, let's let's have Kentucky Fried Chicken. And so after the KFC, we'd go. And uh, you had to go inside those days. There's no such thing as a drive through You went inside to order your, your bucket. He'd order the big bucket and the uh, the uh, perhaps the French fries, the gravy, and, and some slaw. And in those days, like 66, 67, 68, that would run over, run around nine or ten bucks, and he'd open his wallet, and I would actually see uh, what in Canada was a purple one, a purple ten dollar bill. As kids, we, we never saw those. <laughs> That's like a hundred dollar bill today, and I'm like a 10, 12 year old kid, and I'm looking. My dad's holding a purple ten dollar bill. That is a family of five with leftovers. Uh, at KFC, and that was wasting money, according to my mom and dad, wasting money because they could have gone to the grocery store, bought a chicken to roast themselves and all the fixings for maybe three bucks and make it themselves at home. But mom didn't cook on Sundays. Dad wouldn't let her. And so the purple one came out uh, at KFC. What memories come back to you? It's amazing. Yeah, Talking about money way back in the 60s. Isn't that something, guys? Uh, Carrie Hot Hot. Hoskinson is here. Carrie, hi, Bruce. Kent, Washington, 45 degrees. Welcome to my chat. I think you're a newbie. Welcome. Everyone will say hi to you, I'm sure. There's at least two or three newbies here today. It's fantastic. Love having you guys on board. Any of you guys have questions about cruising or what's going on in the cruise world, let me know. If I can't answer it, maybe the folks here can answer it. Uh, Mark Lost Traveler is now saying you can't even buy the empty buck, the bucket for 10 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> the homeless guy outside won't sell you his bucket for 10 bucks. No way. It's a used bucket. Are you kidding me? Uh, <laughs> Skyhawk is saying, I love KFC, but my partner and I try to watch what we eat. Well, yeah, we all try to watch what we eat. I closely watch everything I eat, very closely, and I eat it. <laughs> and that's my problem. I, I eat it, and I love it. And, uh, oh, man, as a kid, boy, what there was nothing tastier than KFC as a kid. I mean. Getting one of those drumsticks. Oh, geez, that was fantastic. Uh, Richard saying, you gained a viewer now, 748. Oh, fantastic. We're up another one. That's wonderful. Uh, we're coming in on 750 here. This is awesome. Yeah, cruise ships today versus yesterday and or the world today versus yesterday. Disneyland, Disney World. My goodness, what did you pay to get into Disney World 20 years ago, 30 years ago? And what are we paying now? Can you believe it? The numbers 
I'm I'm absolutely uh, amazed. I love watching. Uh, I'm a I'm a YouTube fan myself, as you folks know. Those of you who are regulars, I love watching YouTube videos, and I I follow a number of different channels myself. And some of the ones I follow are RVers uh, who are out there RVing all the time, and I love it when uh, when I see videos of them heading into a Disney World. They're heading into uh, the uh, the RV park that Disney World has in Orlando. It's at, is it Frontier Land or something like that? Stunning. I mean, my goodness, that's a whole level of camping that didn't exist when I was a kid. Uh, just incredible. But the numbers, the dollars you have to pay for a camping spot. Oh my gosh, 60, 70 bucks a night to park your RV or or Class C motorhome. Uh, that's uh, incredible money. Then to, you know, then the park itself and to eat and oh. My goodness, you're paying serious money. Um, <clears throat> Karen Lipson's here. Hey, Bruce, did I miss anything? Chinook in Calgary, 45 degrees Fahrenheit today. Um, uh, let's see. Um, one second there. Uh, Skyhawk is saying we try we try to stay fit, and we're fit people. Okay, everybody needs to help Bruce <laughs> in his 1,000 subbies. Got to help Bruce with the 1,000 subbies. Yes, sir, folks. Uh, what what you got to do for me, if you want to, is uh, share my uh, share any one of my videos on Facebook. Or uh, or retweet a tweet if you see one of my tweets. Uh, Instagram, uh, any kind of Instagram messages with a link to my channel, uh, anything like that, that would go a long way. If you can share to all your friends on Facebook out there, that uh, there's this guy who does these live things every day about cruising. It's a lot of fun. That'd be great. Uh, can't can't thank you enough, uh, Karen. You're asking what did you miss? We've been talking about this will come as no surprise to you. Um, cruise ships today and yesterday. Cruise ships yesterday cruise ships today and ocean liners yesterday versus cruise ships today and i've got a few other things i've written down here and uh, we were talking about uh, lobster tails how uh getting hard to get lobster tails in the dining room all of a sudden and uh can't get the big steak in the dining room anymore and can't get the uh, prime rib very often anymore very few cruise lines offer the formal night uh, good stuff you got to go to special restaurants and martha lost traveler mentioned a good one he said uh, a few years ago you got the 16 ounce steak and you got the uh, the big lobster tail for 25 bucks. And then a year later, you got the 12 ounce steak and the small lobster tail, 50 bucks. And uh, that's another trend that's been going on. That's what we've been talking about. Uh, now we're talking about how much it costs to go to Disneyland and Disney World because it's gone crazy and, and a number of other things. Um, Thomas Arnold saying, forgot to tell you, it's 43 in Big Bear. Uh, you're you're my number two today in Big Bear. You're, you're actually my number one because you're my first ever viewer from Big Bear, but my number two is here as well. Fantastic. Welcome, Thomas. Um, at Mark Lost Traveler, even McDonald's hamburger fries and a Coke, uh, one dollar now five bucks. Yeah, well, in Canada, <laughs> Mark, let me tell you, uh, two people uh, having dinner, a Big Mac fries and two Cokes in Canada, 17 bucks Canadian dollars with all our taxes and stuff. Unbelievable, but we get free national health care so we can eat that crap and then we can go to the hospital and get looked after for eating that crap. So, you know. Uh, what, what can I say? Uh, Mark, <laughs> Mark Plus Travel, let's share, Bruce. Uh, Steve Bartley, I went to uh, I went to Disney World the first month it was open, uh, shakedown month before the grand opening. You could walk uh, right onto any ride. Not all rides were operating, however. Wow, that must have been something cool to witness the opening of the whole thing. That must have been something back back in the day in Disney World. Uh, Judy, uh, Judy uh, Ant Anstess. Judy Anstess is here saying, hi, Bruce, 63 degrees, now in Sacramento, just paid for my repositioning cruise yesterday, leaving April 21 on the Norwegian Jade. Cost was only $5.59 for 13 days. Yes. Well done, Judy. Uh, you're going from, uh, I believe you're going from uh, Fort Lauderdale uh, to um, Southampton, if I think, if I got that right. Correct me if I'm wrong. Fantastic. Is that a uh, is that an inside or an ocean view or balcony? Uh, which is that? I'm hunch. My hunch is it's a balcony. Am I right? Fantastic. 13 days, 600 bucks, folks. No wonder you're not getting lobster tail. But hey, look at that price, 600 bucks. Uh, Steve Bartley, Judy, uh, where is it going? Uh, Judy is saying in 1967, Disneyland was eight bucks. Yes, 1967, Disneyland was $8. When Disneyland opened in 1955, $1. $1 admission. That's a lot of money in 1955. Uh, one buck uh, in 55 would be today nine, ten bucks. 
Of course, Disneyland in 1955 didn't have the rides we have now. Let's be honest. And it, when it opened, it wasn't finished. <laughs> I had heard that when uh, uh, people were at the uh, opening in Disneyland in 55, they did a national uh, TV special on ABC television. Art Linkletter was the host. Uh, I've done a video all about it. And um, uh, the uh, the uh, a lot of the folks, the dignitaries were there uh, with husbands and wives. And they had a lot of ribbon cutting ceremonies for the various parts of the park. And uh, they had the, they had paved a lot of the area, of course, to you know, to, to, to on the grounds. And some of the women were complaining that their high heels were sinking into the asphalt, the asphalt, because it hadn't hardened yet. It, it, they'd only paved it the afternoon before. The, the pavement was barely 24 hours old in most of the area of the park, and women's high heels were sinking in. <laughs> they were scrambling to get that thing open on time. Uh, uh, Skyhawk saying, "Wow, Judy, amazing deal." Uh, Mark Lost Travel saying now to get on a Disney ride, it could take up to two hours for a two minute ride, depending on what time uh, of year you go out. Yeah, that, this is this is where I can't understand the um, the point of it anymore. I mean, if you're going to spend $125, like full price, uh, you get a, even if you get a three day hopper pass and all this, how many rides are you going to get in? I mean, uh, good luck getting, uh, you know, four, five rides in in a day. I, I just, Depending on the time of year, it's absolutely, uh, um, to me, it's insane. It's really gotten crazy. Judy is saying, uh, the, the oh, she's saying that Miami, it was an upgrade uh, to, to a good upgrade. They started 449. It was upgraded. So you got an upgrade. Fantastic. Uh, you, you got my name right. Laugh out loud. En Enste Enstes. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I try. I try. Uh, great, great cruise. That'll be fantastic. And, uh, you'll be in the UK when it's all over. <clears throat> and now you can uh, plan a little holiday from there. When you get there, you won't have to worry about jet lag because you've been adjusting to the time change over 13 days crossing the Atlantic. Fantastic. Uh, Mark lost traveler saying about Disney, don't go in May, June, July, or August uh, and do the deaths, do the Disney uh, and do the Disney death March. <laughs> I'm not sure what that means, Mark, the death March. Karen saying, I did that cruise on the Jade last spring. Very nice ship and great entertainment. Yep, that, uh, that's right. Uh, from Tampa all the way to, uh, to uh, the Keys and then up to, uh, up to uh, Southampton. Uh, they've, this is the second year in a row. The Jade is being repositioned up to uh, Europe. Fantastic. I was on the Jade in, in uh, Europe. I took it from Southampton into the Mediterranean, and our, uh, our cruise ended in Barcelona. And 11-day uh, cruise with my daughter. Fantastic. Loved it. I loved the ship. I enjoyed it. Enjoyed it very much. Uh, let me just see about other stuff about before and now. Uh, you remember, remember um, uh, going back a little ways, uh, they used to have, of course, formal nights, and we still have some of those now, but formal nights meant men wore tuxedos and women wore evening gowns to the nines. Uh, it was like as good as your closet could deliver you before you got ready to leave your house to go on the ship i can imagine that uh if you were husband and wife are going on an anniversary cruise say crossing the atlantic ocean to england and spend a few weeks there and come back uh before two weeks before you were getting ready to go on the cruise even a month before um mom and dad were in their closets and they were double checking their wardrobe because formal nights there were going to be a couple of formal nights on this cruise ship and uh, dad would put his tuxedo on in the house to double check that he could still fit in that tuxedo and if he didn't fit off to the tailor he went the next morning because the missus would make sure there's no way you're getting on that cruise ship without your tux fitting you and you're getting that tux fitted and 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 hemmed and whatever needed to be done by your tailor in your hometown whether you lived in new york or wherever else um and then of course you know on the ship oh man you, you were all dolled out you would be in line to meet the captain and the captain would be in his finest suit his you know his, his laundry department had been working that afternoon on his clothing and you'd get your picture taken with the captain the cruise photographer would be taking a photo of you and your wife with the captain of the ship that would be standard fare for formal night because I'm talking about 1,500 people on a ship, maybe 1,200 people on a ship, not 5,000. Um, and what else was I going to mention about this? Oh, and then the other thing about uh, going back a ways, sail away parties. Um, 
you you would get on the ship in uh, in New York, and you lived in New York. Uh, you'd have a couple of uh, friends of yours take you down there, and they'd get on the ship with you, and all four of you be on the ship for a couple hours, and there would be a sail away party on board the ship, and then the the call would go out, the the, the sort of siren and the the horn would go, that would tell all the guests of the passengers time to get off the ship only paying passengers are from here on out are heading to southampton and so all these folks were getting off the ship that stayed in new york and then would wave and you remember the ticker tape they would throw and the streamers you throw off the ship onto the pier there are no streamers today on cruise ships <laughs> there's no there's no real sail away party per se they stage one at the uh, pool deck you know they got the barbecue pit out and they have, you know, the music playing and they have the staff dancing to try to get you to go and move. They're desperately trying to get the passengers to join in on the party because the paid staff are dancing in front of you. But uh, those days are gone. And uh, today, captain greeting, you ever you ever had a picture taken with the captain of the ship? Uh, not not easily done. You have to be a member of the, you know, the, the frequent sailor club now. You got to be a, a first class a uh, haven passenger on Norwegian or, uh, you know, a high-end passenger on another line to get to, to get a shot at having a shot with a, a picture with the captain if, if you want one. But back in the 50s, it was the thing to do. You, Of course, you'd get a picture with the captain, of course. And then you'd take that photo home and put it in your photo, photo album and show it off to your relatives. Had to do that. Uh, what do we got? Mark Lost Traveler saying they call it the Disney Death March. Okay, this is the Death March. Because it was so hot with so many people just marching from ride to ride, and there was not, a, it was not very happy because it's so hot, 98 degrees with 100% humidity, not the happiness place. <laughs> I guess not, Mark. That would not be fun. No, uh, count me out. Charlie Baum is saying, I took the SS United States in the early 60s. And we dressed in tuxedos, and the food was great. I also hit all the bars. <laughs> yes, sir. That would have been really something, really cool. Uh, Steve Bartley saying, arriving in Hawaii, you were greeted with a lay. With a lay, yeah, with that lie. Uh, you know, traditions. Gone. More and more gone. Uh, Donna Man Mankinnon is here. Donna Mankinnon. Hi from, um, is it Belloy? Wisconsin, is that how I say it? I don't say the T, I don't want to pronounce the T. Uh, 32 degrees here, Donna, you're new, and uh, so I'm having trouble pronouncing your name and your, your location. Uh, if it's Beloit, perhaps, but it's Beloit, I think B-E-L-O-I-T. Beloit, Wisconsin, 32 here, welcome to the channel. You're kind of catching us near the end, but you can watch this rerun later. Fantastic to have you here. Uh, Richard Kormaski saying, Charlie, the SS United States has been docked in Philly for like the last 15 years. It is nothing but a rust bucket, they really should be broken up. It's such an eyesore. You're, you're absolutely right. I know that uh, about uh, 20 years ago, uh, Richard, they took that, uh, they took the, the, what was left of her uh, after they stripped it of all of its valuables and they uh, took it over to Bangladesh and they took it to a scrapyard where they had it blasted, uh, sort of sandblasted. They got all the asbestos out of it because it had all the asbestos in the, um, in the lining of the, of the uh, ceiling tiles and, and, you know, the glues in those days had asbestos in it. It was, just, it, it, it was a toxic mess. But it, the only place you could take it, I believe it was Bangladesh. I, I might be mistaken. Uh, George, you might help me on this one. You might know this. Um, but back in those, back in the, uh, this would be like the 90s, uh, very few countries would allow that ship into its waters anymore because of environmental concerns. But I believe that if they took it anywhere, they would have taken it to Bangladesh, uh, maybe India, and they would have brought it to a shipyard there and they would have had the workers with just, you know, plain nurses masks on poor protection. And then they sandblasted this thing to, to its core. And then they, they had a tow. It was, it couldn't go on its own power. Then had it towed back to the United States and it was allowed back into us territorial waters because it was clean. It was, it was completely, you know, decom decontaminated of all these car carcinogens. Is that the word? And uh, it's been in Philly ever since. And Norwegian Cruise Line actually bought the ship um, 10, 12 years ago. And the talk was that they were going to remodel it and redesign it and refloat it as a cruise ship. And uh, they, uh, they worked on it. They, 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 uh, and what I mean by working on it, they put some engineers to work. And uh, they, they walked the ship. They measured it out. They, uh, 
went and got their, their calculators out and they uh, talked to architects and designers and came up with some ideas, some designs, how to preserve a majority of the look of the ship, uh, but yet also modernize it. They did the math and uh, cannot be saved. Um, that ship cannot be brought up to any kind of standard where it would be economically viable to operate. Even with the new technology pro in propulsion, it just can't be done. And so unfortunately, uh, she's really des she's destined eventually for the scrap heap, uh, but nobody wants to do it because uh, it's now been turned back. Uh, a Norwegian dumped it. They, they offloaded it to a uh, private, uh, some kind of a private uh, uh, owner. And now that owner has donated it or offloaded it or sold it or something to another historical preservation group society. There's a long story to this ship. And it sits in Philadelphia. And uh, many, many people would love to see something done with it. And many, many others are going, we can't get the math to work. Now, the common or one theme that's starting to come out now is, well, can it be uh, restored to be just a, uh, not even a floating hotel, but maybe a floating conference area, uh, combination entertainment facility, uh, can it be, you know, used for weddings and, you know, they'll, they'll do the interior, you know, it won't be a rusty Hulk anymore. Of course, they'll have it all painted and then they'll, 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 they'll finish the interiors. But I, I, I don't know how many, is it 50 million, 80 million, a hundred million dollars? What will it take to make that ship worth saving? You can't fix a quarter of it. You got to do all of it. And there's the issue. And if you talk to the folks that operate and manage the Queen Mary, you find out from those folks what the cost of keeping the Queen Mary where it is, sitting in water, surrounded by rocks that have cut it off from the pier. The engines are out. The 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 stacks were removed and replaced with fake smoke stacks. The interiors were, were heavily redone. And now there are air conditioning systems that are operated on land that keep the ship cool and I don't know if it can be done economically today um, and can it be saved. I really don't know. So anyway, there's the, what I know about it uh, at this point for, for everybody. Um, yeah, the SS United States. Uh, George is saying, hard tea on Bel Beloit. Thank you, George. Hard tea on Beloit. I hope I'm getting that right. Skyhawk, uh, did I miss the talk about the new Carnival ship? Uh, yes, you did. Uh, we talked about that first, the Panorama. Uh, it's going to be in Long Beach uh, 2019. Uh, and it's going to replace the uh, Splendor. Is it the Carnival Splendor? That one's going to go to dry dock and then going to Australia. Sylvan Forrest, picture, picture night with the captain. My wife dropped her purse as she got to the captain. I bent down to pick it up. So did he, and we bumped noggins. <laughs> Good times. Sad about the United States. <laughs> Two gentlemen bending down to pick up the lady's purse. I mean, after all. Oh my goodness. Uh, George saying lots of YouTube ship breaking videos with still today, safety, environmental problems, injuries, and worse. Yeah, George, you're absolutely right. There's uh, there's, it's a sad, sad story. Uh, Donna, uh, uh, man, Kenyon, you got my name, right? Thank you. Fantastic. Mark lost traveler. Good night, everybody. Offer a great steak dinner at Capitol grill about the same price as a Disney cruise laugh out loud, but it's a great steak and lobster tail. 12 more days. Norwegian getaway. Bye-bye for now. See you, Mark. Have a great one. Doreen Chapman. Hi, Bruce. We'll have, we'll have a tow much later. Uh, we'll have a tow much later. Minus 12 here. Oh, my goodness. Uh, George uh, McGrath saying, the small number of shipbreaking company owners make a fortune on the misfortunes of their employees. Uh, yeah, that's right. The, the, those who are breaking up these ships uh, uh, using slave labor, basically, to do it. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. George saying their employees are treated as uh, indentured servants. Very rough and tough conditions. Yeah, I mean, these folks are, you know, they're starving as it is, but they're starving and working at the same time, and they're surviving. They're just surviving. They're, they, they don't save anything. They got nothing, and they come to work every day as long as they can work, and then when they die, they die, and they die of poisoning and uh, work-related injuries. It's terrible. Uh, but this is where ships go to die from a lot of countries in the world, especially the, so the old Soviet bloc. Uh, these ships get... Uh, you know, literally driven there. The ships are one last time they get taken down to these uh, places in Bangladesh and India where they're scrapped and cut to pieces. And then the metal is sold off and the wiring is sold off and everything else is, I don't know where it's dumped. I have no idea where this stuff goes. 
I almost don't want to know. It's actually terrible. It's a real environmental mess. I can imagine the water down there is a cesspool of nightmares. And we hear these hear and see these stories on YouTube all the time, what they're doing with these old ships. It's a sad, it's a sad thing. A uh, uh, couple last points about before the old days and now regarding cruise ships. Uh, we've touched on this earlier a little bit. Lobster tails we used to get real butter for the lobster tails. Now they say that there's melted margarine and cream for your coffee. Have you noticed this? You go to the buffet uh, and you're sitting down and you, or you're even in the dining room now. Some of the, some of the cruise ship dining rooms, you order a cup of coffee and uh, they bring you the little thing of cream and sugar and the cream isn't cream. It's artificial oil substitute product. It's like a fake stuff. You don't even get real cream anymore. Uh, it's a really, it, it cut corners everywhere. Uh, that's uh, that's sad. It's a sad story. Uh, and then the other, a couple of things I was going to say was shoe shine service. Do you remember the shoe shine service? You'd leave your pair of shoes, the men and the women. You'd have your leather leather pumps or leather leather shoes for the guys. You'd leave them outside your cabin door in the evening when you retired. And the next morning when you got up, you opened your cabin door, and there would be your shoes would be fully shined, buffed to a high gloss finish, perfect. Every night, part of the service. You leave your shoes outside the hallway now, I think security is going to knock on your door and say, get your shoes back in your room. You're cluttering up the hallway. They don't shine shoes anymore like that. Those are those another another uh, little thing that's gone uh, compared to the uh, new days. It's the old days. And then one last thing. Uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, ship to shore communication. Uh, back in the 30s and the 40s, it was Morse code. You got the telegram. Uh, but by the mid-50s, telephone service was inaugurated on the Cunard line. You could pick up the telephone and call back home or where you're headed to. Uh, you didn't want to know how much, though. You don't want to know how much that cost, an arm and a leg. Of course, now today, texts, uh, Wi-Fi across the ship, or go to the Internet lounge and pay so much a minute, and you can send messages, photos, videos, and say hi to your friends back home. So that's how things have, have come and gone over the years. Anyway, I think that's where I'm going to leave it here. Um, we've been on for an hour and a half. I can't believe it. it time flies when you're having this much fun. Uh, I, I want to thank all you guys who came out. Of course, my regulars always uh, love you guys. And some newbies, I want to thank you folks for coming in today. It's fantastic. Uh, I'm on every day at 5 o'clock Eastern time on this channel, uh, Monday to Friday. And on Saturdays, I'm on at 2 o'clock Eastern time. Sunday, I take off because i got to rest the vocals. And uh, we talk cruise ship talk all the time. And uh, we anything you want me to talk about, any subject you want me to cover, just let me know and we'll get into it. Any questions you have while we're going, just fire away. Happy to answer them. I want to say uh, thanks to uh, to all of you for coming. I want to thank everybody who's subscribing to my channel. I, I can't thank you enough. I so appreciate it. Uh, most of you know we're desperately trying to reach 1,000 subscribers a week from now. <laughs> Feb 20. That's the big day. YouTube has insisted that if you have 1,000 subscribers or more, you can stay monetized. If you're under 1,000 subscribers, you're not monetized. You don't get paid for doing this. And this is my job. This is my full-time job. This is all I do. Uh, last I heard, 748 subscribers, I think. we. I started for 747 when I started today. <clears throat> and I want to thank uh, number 748 for coming on board. And uh, if any of you can uh, uh, promote my channel on your Facebook pages or uh, through your through your social networks, that would be great. Let the world know we're doing this. That would be fantastic. We're growing uh, organically as it is, and we love it. And uh, I can't thank you enough. So everyone's saying good night here. I'm saying good night for everyone uh, as well. Steve Bartley just said, I remember Dad leaving his shoes outside the door. Yep, absolutely. Those are the days. Hotels did that too. You know, you left your shoes outside the door in the hotel. Next morning, all shined up. Perfect. Uh, not anymore. Uh, George uh, McGraw was just commenting on Caribbean port calls prior to cell phones. You could use your uh, VHF Marine handheld radio to make phone calls on the Marine phone channels. <laughs> Man, that's handy. That is really handy stuff uh, and economical too, I'll tell you. Fantastic. Debbie saying, thanks, Bruce. Check in tomorrow. Good night. Teresa saying, good night. Uh, Fantastic, everybody. Thanks for watching. This is Bruce with Travel. Thanks. I've enjoyed. We'll talk to you tomorrow, 5 o'clock Eastern time. Have a good evening. Take care, everybody.